Hey guys, welcome at my channel. This video I make in English because the most of the Peugeot 1007 seems to be out of Germany sold. Uh, the issue door won't open or door is sliding forward and going back. We will going through the whole problems. So stay tuned. I hope to help you with your door faulty problem, your sliding door issue. When I started, I thought it would be an easy job. Never heard about Peugeot 2007 before the owner said change the motor, but we did the analytic way. So the first thing was to clean these terminals. Then so. was to reset. This is told in, in several videos here at YouTube. Didn't work. So next is pry off the door panel to replace the actuator motor. At this stage we only heard the beep beep of a failure. I'm gonna link in the info box a prior tool. Don't be worried if these little fittings will be destroyed. Make them new. So this is what an actuator motor looks like if you careless use the door handles and use it with too much power. If it don't moves, it don't moves, it has to be repaired. After changing the actuator motor and resetting again, the actuator will work, but there is a need of mechanical help by pushing against the door or using the handle itself to open it. At this stage we first time heard the whining of the uh, moving motor for the sliding door itself and could be sure we hadn't to replace it. It was healthy. All the experts said to me we never had a broken motor. This motor is under the seat and it's a lot of work to replace it. Here I show you the Bowden cable. This cable is unlocking the lock at the rear side of the door. Just a second. It's essential to understand the main motor pulls the door in the lock I show here and to unlock the Bowden cable will be pulled. So our next idea was what about mechanical friction in the door slider mechanism in the rail or the rolls itself. So we tested by adding extra force during the process of locking by hand. Just a second. Here you see the mechanism. So once again you hear the lock. To understand the follow following process it's essential to know this door slider has a safety circuit like Windows 2. If the force is exceeding too much there is supposed a human is between. So the system measuring a too high current for the door motor and reopen the door. So the next thing we did was to check the lower roller assembly. For this we, we unscrew, we disassembled. There are four nuts and it's very important to check the door like I showed here. To support the door it 
won't fall down and destroy other mechanical components. This is a 13 nut, four of them. And there is maybe a need of a little force to, to loosen it completely. So here we go. And now we move the, the roller slider or however you call it. I don't know the exactly uh, name of this item. But you see I'm in a little trouble because the, the electronic gets the idea I want to move the door forward in, in, by, by this micro switch at the rear end. So what I'm going to do now is pulling the fuses, the fuse for this right motor. Be sure the ignition is off. You also can unconnect the battery to positioning in a mid position. Okay. This is also a resetting procedure. Unconnecting the battery, sliding the doors in rear position and waiting some minutes will initialize the system of the doors. But no guarantee, really no guarantee. It's a bit tricky. This system is a nice idea, good idea on narrow parking lots. But if it fails, you see there is a lot of working. What's, what's our, our purpose here? We want to is inspect the mechanical condition of the rollers. And as you see, they, they are not like new. They should be maybe replaced too. But they are not flattened or something like that. The ball bearings are in good condition so we went on to find the, the true failure now and rebuilding this unit. S please watch the video completely. I show you in some minutes a very bad roll, a flattened roll. Here you see the, the, the line cables. Once again, I showed you in the picture about the motor. But at this stage, everything seems to be okay. Not like a new car, but not, not too bad. Please compare with my picture about the motor some minutes before in the video. After checking the lower roller bearing unit, we are going to check the upper one. The idea was that maybe this upper roller unit is faulty, uh, has too much friction, and this would overload the moving motor, I, I don't know the exactly word, the motor under the seat, the, the, this one moving the door will be overloaded in the last sequence when, when the door must be locked by the lock, which you could see if you go a little bit more down than in this video shown. Okay, warning. There is a third screw at the side, so don't go on trying. It's a, a, a pretty big job 
if something at these doors is failing, but like I say in my videos about the hydraulic or electric driven mechanism of uh, soft top cars, carpios like we say, this is a price for convenience. At my Triumph Roadster, you open the, the cover by hand and all you maybe need is a bit of oil. Okay, here is the third screw. This is a T30 Torx. And you ha have to loosen it to, to disassemble the unit. There's a lot of grease in this area. So somebody tried to fix it. Maybe he knew, he knew the failure and it would be fair to communicate this failure. I suppose greased it and sold it. That's just a, a okay, be carefully. Once again, check the door. Nothing went wrong here, but you could damage the upper mechanism. And here you need a, a little bit of power to, to loosen it. And now look at that. Just a second more. Do you see the flattened roll? Do you see it? It's God. completely flattened. Yeah. And this causes an overload of the electric yeah. motor in the last sequence yeah. in case of safety circuit. Here are some more impressive pictures of this damaged roll. In the next part of the video I show I show you this ball bearing. I think it's not the most expensive one. The next experience was this roller bearing unit is not avail available again at affordable prices. I only found, found one guy rebuilding them and he is asking for about 240 euros so my idea was to replace the roll i give you in in a, in a following of the video the sizes and a distributor it's a polish company but i changed to replace this roll by another one from a by given part from the owner. This is not fitting to this roller unit, but the roll itself was e equal. So what did we do? We disassembled this unit it's, I don't know the exact word, it's, it's pressed, it's, it's like riveting, okay, riveting. You have to flatten it and then you, you use a puller, a puller to, to disassemble the bearing. And now all the hope is gone because we realized the inner ring is made of two parts and gets stability by by the by the riveting here i show you how you could disassemble the axis of these rollers a suitable nut no, not, no, a socket a suitable socket at the rear side and press it out just if you want to go this way of just repo re replacing the roller so here we go with disam disassembling and if you're not interested in just skip 
but for those who got a roll, a roller bearing, and want to go this way, I show the details. And here you see the inner, the inner bearing surface was built by by two halves. And I, I think they riveting the whole components together. So if you change the, the role, you must to change this axis too. So it's only possible if you have access to a lashy and someone who, who, who can use it, can operate it, because you somehow have to fix your new bearing on this axis. One important thing in my drawing, I measured, I measured the, the outer diameter of the roll correctly, but I wrote the wrong size on the sheet. The outer diameter isn't 15, it's 25. Okay? Just a little failure by me. Sorry. By this way, once again, in the info box of my video, I'm going to link some helpful tools yes I know I should clean this up once again that's the, 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 the inner diameter of the bearing it's six millimeters six millimeter okay just just for those who want to keep their unit and want to replace the roller Maybe you make a video about for the community. And once again here, thanks to Jim Butterworth and his fantastic website in the internet about the Peugeot 1007, 1007 slider doors and the Facebook group. These guys help me a lot just to understand how this door unit works. Okay, here once again, not 15, 25. I write in the info box too. So, like I said before, we took a, a other spare part with a suitable roller roller system and welded it into our original roller assembly. This welding is maybe not the best in the world. If you follow this, clean up better the, the paint and here we go. So now we are testing and nothing happened. All I remembered was that even when I pulled the key, the battery signal was blinking. So I just started the engine and look now, it works. It works. What a nice sound to hear but now we have another issue the door still won't unlock and i show you why my idea was what about if this bowden cable unlocking the rear lock is fatigued fat, okay leng lengthened by use it too hard, use the handle too hard and so I, I hard pulled this inner wire 
And the door jetzt. unlocked Handy suddenly. Ziehe, ja. Da muss ich aufpassen, dass ich mir das Ding nicht einklemmt hier, ja. Aber schaut mal her, wenn ich jetzt von Hand mit Gewalt ziehe, ja. Just, you see? That if you're in the in the left Und side of the of the of the clip, you can see the door is unlocking. Okay, so the cable is too long, is over. How do you say? Over tightened. And to verify this idea, I took a little, how do you say, straps, cable straps, we, we, we say in Kabelbinder, you know what I mean, okay. And just to verify, unlikely, first of all, worked nothing, because I, I, I pressed it by screwing this unit. So I loosened again. Schaut mal. And see, it works. And so we eliminated the last failure of this car. This was a long way. Uh, there were a lot of failures for one car, for, for one unit. Jetzt wieder nicht, oder was? And I can't leave it this way in this condition so i show you how i glued with a, a two components glue i fixed the uh, the cable i i could replace the whole unit to the rear lock and the cable but this would, would become too expensive for such an old car uh, we, we have a, a saying uh zeitwertgerechte reparatur i i don't know the the, the english word okay I test it once again. It unlocks. It unlocks. Now. And then the last stage is to, to glue this, to keep it in position, to fix it. Just a second. As you see, this is no car repair. This is a, battle, a battlefield. Just a second. So I modified the round end of the of the cable, and now I mix in the glue, and soon you will see what I modified. Give me a second. So I don't have uh, video clips about modifying this silver plate and now we start to rebuild i link this tool or a similar one in the info box of my video if you buy it by my link you support my channel in a minor way without additional costs okay Now we're coming to the end of this repair. We replaced these little fittings. As I said, they are available. They are cheap. Nine euros, a set of 12, I think. As you see, this is my way to, to fix the inner door blade. I bring it in position and the door is closing and now I fix it at the upside where the window is. And and, and hammer it in position. I'm comparing. Come on. Then I screw the two the two bolts okay. of the of the uh, of the motor of the actuator plate this is reverse reverse and, and uh, disassembling and then i click all the little fittings okay. 
Seat forward, backward is helpful. Fist. Fist. Okay. Hier noch eine. And after so. this, we going to to test again t, t, t. and then complete. It must be assembled from forward. I just have one hand in this stage to film. But it's simple. Yeah. But this part of the video is maybe interesting for those starting to disassembly and have no idea how how to do. This, with this wonderful noise of a, again working door, I say goodbye and maybe subscribe or like. And I hope you good effort with your project.